Good morning. Good I, morning. I am so thrilled to be here with you. We had a good time this morning. It was good. What, about eight, nine hundred women you just spoke to. That Phenomenal. was amazing. Uh, just to have so many women, such power concentrated in one place in New York City. What an event. Uh, phenomenal. So we're at the Women's Global Leadership Summit for the AICPA, and this is Maria Contreras Sweet, who is a former cabinet secretary in the Obama administration and really a serial entrepreneur. Right? I think that's right. All right. That's so right. I would love if you could spend a little time just sharing some of your lessons learned over the years. And I understand that your grandmother was a source of great wisdom for you. I have the kind of grandmother everybody has. You know, she's just so generous with her ideas and, you know, just this wisdom that she always imparted. But as we were leaving uh, Mexico and coming here, I, you know, I was saddened because I loved her and I loved my environment, everything that I was doing in school. But she just said, you know, America is such a special place of opportunity. And she said, you know, there's no question that you're going to achieve certain things in life. But remember, it's not the titles that you have. It's what you do with the titles that you have. And so I've always taken that to heart and think about as I move ahead, how am I bringing others along? How am I contributing back to this great society of ours? And how am I deepening democracy and growing an economy? That's, that's incredible, and I think really important, especially now we're in this age of digital disruption, and the idea that any one person alone has the answer mm -hmm. just isn't a reality. Mm -hmm. It's all of us together that are gonna create new opportunities and new answers. Mm -hmm. um, we are at a women's leadership event. Any reflections you have on women leaders and the opportunity for women leaders? Well, I think, you know, to your earlier point, I think in terms of disruption, um, I am delighted to be here and I really wanted to meet with your, with your um, members because it's so important in these times that we really have um, honest, transparent, really clear disclosures mm -hmm. in everything that we do as a business. You know, when I think about it, people just say, oh, it's a CPA and it's a financial report. As a member of a corporate board myself, I know that embedded in our investors is women and men and children who have put their school savings in there, who have put their um, retirement funds in there. These are people's future, their livelihoods are invested in this. And so we look to the CPAs to be able to, of course, run the numbers for us. Right. But more importantly, it's the judgment, it's the advice, it's the consultation. I mean, for any of you who have seen the hidden figures movie. Oh, right. Do you, I don't know if you saw that movie, but it's really a fantastic movie. If you haven't seen it, you have to go see it. But the point is that computers started the human computers, right? It starts with these two women who are human computers and then how they evolve. And so the point is we used to have human computers. Now we have these real computers. And so over time, technology will disrupt the way in which we calculate, the way mm -hmm. we run the numbers. But what you can't replace is the judgment, the advice, the guidance. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's the role that we ought to continue to focus on to understand not just the narrow part of it, but how that business fits in the total picture, in the economic picture of our community or of the state or, or the federal government or in the world, depending on the size of business. And so that's what I'm excited about is to meet these men and women who are at the table who are engaging and really making certain that there is a rule of law in these books, that there is an honesty and integrity. And I think with the advent of all these new rules that are coming down, like just we, we were just talking about CAMS yesterday, right. critical audit matters, <laughs> and how we're gonna have to now translate those. I look to the judgment of our CPAs to give us guidance on those things. That's fantastic. And you just also said something about um, those men and women that have a seat at the table. We are at a women's event. Um, there's this great quote that I am absolutely gonna butcher. But that talks about, but, and you're an entrepreneur, so I think this will be meaningful to you. Sometimes you hear from women, but I don't have a seat at the table. And there's the great quote is about just drag up your folding chair and make your own seat at the table. But thinking about your career and opportunity and standing up for opportunities, mm -hmm. how did that evolve for you? Mm -hmm. How did you get to be a cabinet secretary? <laughs> Well, that's a longer story, but I think what uh, what's most fundamental for me is that oftentimes we say, well, he didn't give me power. She didn't give me any power. I didn't mm -hmm. have power in the meeting. 
And the real, my view is that if you're given power, then they can take it away. Then you don't have it. Right. So to me, you create your own power and you hold on to your own power. You're not given power. And for me, the way that it worked was that I knew that I, I was in the grocery industry. I was in the beverage business. And so I understood that for us, we did not sell to the consumers. We didn't sell to you. We sold to the grocery stores who sold right. to you. We made the soda pop. We sold to the grocery stores. So I developed relationships with the grocery store executives, right. went to organizations where I met them. That gave me a certain status inside the company then. I would say, well, I can call the president of this company or I can call. All of a sudden, it was like I had the power. I could call to get us that in-dial display. I, and so I looked for ways to elevate myself so that when I was at that table, I could speak up with a sense of knowledge. I could speak up with a sense of authority. And I think that as, as men or as women, we have to look to find ways in which developing our own power and not wait for somebody to give it to us. That's, that's good. And then that also then speaks a little bit to the idea of nobody's an expert in everything, right? And that we all probably should be lifelong learners. Mm -hmm. And um, what is your favorite way to learn? Like if you want to learn about something new, say you, say the first time you heard about blockchain and you wanted to know about that, what would be your go-to for learning more about a topic? And it doesn't have to be blockchain. I just used yeah. that as an example. Right, well in anything, I, you know, I think even in decision making and the most fundamental things that we do, I mean, for me, I always try to bring different people who have an interest in that space and then just spend some time with them. I mean, you know, given that you've already done your Google searches and right, your, right. You know, all, this, all the searches so that you have some basic understanding of whatever it is, then I'll go to that conference, I meet people who are the thought leaders in that place, and then I find a way in which to be able to connect with them and, and engage more deeply. I go to the academic institutions. You mentioned blockchain, and I know you didn't mean that literally, but for example, I actually did go to MIT and talk to some of the professors and try to understand what was going on there and then talk to some of the companies that were uh, involved. And so, you know, you just, you try to do that. But that's, for me, I've had to pivot so many times that I always say, we're not, you know, you always feel stupid at the beginning. I okay. always feel really, really stupid about something. When I arrived here, I was the stupidest person in the classroom, <laughs> you know, but then I realized. I can't believe that. That once I learned English and I learned the language, I found out that I wasn't dumb at all. And so, you know, when I got into transportation as California Secretary of Transportation, they were talking to me about piles and drives and grade separations and, you know, all these formulas for funding. I just thought, oh, I'm the stupidest person in the world. And then I learned the formulas. I studied, focused, learned. And then once I learned the language, I thought, well, there, it's all clear to me now. It was all it just became apparent. And in every case, I've learned that I'm not disadvantaged. I'm not inferior. That once I learned the language, I'm here with everybody else. And sometimes our common sense actually even is, you know, is so creative, you come up with just, you bring your own instincts. People sort of say, gosh, I don't know how to disrupt, I don't know how this. And I always say, what's a pain point?